Hello everyone, it's me, Nikki, and today we are back with part two of the historical mysteries coming out for August. Just like last time, there will be seven books. And so, on August 4th, there will be Shadows in Time, a Kendra Donovan mystery, and this is book five in the series. So let's go find out about that. The first one is called The Murder in Time. Oh, okay, so it looks like they all have, like, in time. Oh, okay. So Kendra Donovan is a rising star at the FBI. So how is this a historical mystery? She goes through a stairwell and ends up in 1815. That's pretty cool. So she's forced to adapt and then there's a murder and then Kendra has to unmask the murderer. So in this one, it's 1816 and Kendra is tracking down a missing man but also finds trouble brewing closer to home. She's approached by Mrs. Gavinston with an unusual request to find her business manager, Jeremy Pasco, who recently vanished. To Kendra's way of thinking, spending her time locating a missing person suits her more than perfecting her embroidery, painting watercolors, and practicing on the piano forte or any of the other activities that are socially acceptable for young ladies in the 19, early 19th century. Unfortunately, the missing persons case turns into a murder investigation after Kendra finds the man stabbed to death in a remote cottage. Um, everyone who knew him says that he was a fine fellow. Uh, and then that plunges Kendra into the world of big business as Mrs. Gavinson happens to run one of the largest breweries in England. And if there's one thing Kendra knows hasn't changed, it's that big business means big money and money is always a motive for murder. And then she shifts, sifts through the truth and lies swirling around Mr. Pascoe's life and death. Her world is rocked closer when a woman arrives claiming to be the Duke of Aldridge's presumably dead daughter, Charlotte. That probably has something to do with the other books. Um, and then there's a killer lurking in the shadows who will do anything to keep the truth from being exposed. You know, that sounds pretty interesting. I don't think I've read oops, and or uh, seen any historical books that um, do that, time travel and stuff. So that's pretty cool. It's not exactly hydration, but keeps the throat from getting dry. Um, also on August 4th, a lot of these are coming out on August 4th, because I think one, two, three, four, five, a lot of them are coming out on August 4th. So this one is called A Murder in the East End, a Below Stairs Mystery. Sometimes Amazon has, um... Uh, that it is part of a series and sometimes it doesn't. This is the fourth in the Cat Holloway series and it is uh, Victorian. So young cook Cat Holloway learns that the children of London's Foundling Hospital are mysteriously disappearing and one of their nurses has been murdered and she can't not try to help that. She enlists the help of her charming and enigmatic confidant, Daniel McAdam, who has ties to Scotland Yard and Errol Fielding, a disre disreputable man from Daniel's troubled past, to bring the killer to justice. Their investigation takes them from the grandeur of Mayfair to the sun's slums of East End, during which Cat learns more about Daniel and his circumstances 
than she ever could have imagined. So, she in the first book, she's a highly sought after young cook, and she's at Mayfair Mansion, and then a maid is murdered, and her and Daniel figure that out. So that's interesting as well, because I've said this before, a lot of um, historical mysteries, if it's a woman, they tend to be nuns or um, wealthy women who can go about. It's, it's very rare when you see it that they are a lower class. So I like that. Uh, okay, we have a new date. August 14th, The Masquerade of Truth. Uh, let's see if this is part of anything. No, it doesn't even seem to be on Goodreads, so... Um, oh, I forgot to say, Shadows in Time is by Julia McElwin. Murder in the East End is by Jennifer Ashley. And Masquerade of Truth is by Gary L. Creek, I believe. Now on Amazon, um, when you go to pre-order it, it says this title has not been released. But um, by the title, it says August 14th. So that's what I'm going with. Um, and this says, When Reverend Richard Fountain comes across a homeless person breathing his last after a vicious attack, his visit to New Orleans takes a disturbing turn. Realizing the dying man may not be what he seems, Fountain makes inquiries of various colorful New Orleans characters. The warn to leave the investigation <clears throat> to the police, the Reverend sets about uncovering the truth himself. But nothing is as it appears in New Orleans. Even dead men can hide behind a masquerade of deception and intrigue. Ooh, but it doesn't say when it is set. And I can only believe Amazon when it places it as a historical mystery. Um, let's look up the author on Goodreads. All the way over. He's got one book. that I wanted, but sure. Um, yeah, it doesn't say much, so... I mean, it still sounds interesting, but I'm not 100% sure about it. There's not a lot to go on. Okay, on August 18th, we have an old money murder in a Mayfair by Sarah Rosette. This is book five in the High Society Lady Detective series, like I just said. If usually if you see women, they are nuns who are considered upper class and rich women who can come and go. So this is in 1923. And we'll look up the first one, because that's only fair. Uh, da -da -da -da. It does that sometimes where it doesn't like give you the first book. Ugh. Okay, the first one is called Murder at Archley Manor, and um, uh, it's about Olive Belgrave. She is the aristocratic upbringing, but penniless, and yeah. So in the fifth book, 
Olive's school chum, Gigi, invites Olive to London because Gigi's dotty grandmother fears for her life, or so she said. However, Olive is, to, is surprised to find that the dowager is far from muddled. The sharp and imperious matriarch refuses to admit to her worries and sends Olive on her way. I do enjoy a um, older woman who is pretty much on the ball. Sort of like Miss Marple. That's what I always liked about um, the show and the, the books is that everybody like dismissed Marple when she was like figuring everything out. Anyway, without a client or a case, Olive is swept into the glittering lifestyle of the fast set and their decadent excess. Oh dear. But then among the cocktails and champagne, a murderer strikes during a frivolous party game and Olive reveal realizes the dowager's fears were well founded. Can she unmask the culprit before the party's over for a bright young person? This sounds interesting. Um, I, th I have read a couple um, in the 1920s about um, murder, but it's not usually like, it's not like the bright young people type of stuff, so... Um, yeah, that sounds really interesting, actually. And hopefully the matriarch is as great as I think she is. Ooh, okay, gotta drink something. Someday, I imagine, I will get better at this. Um, okay. The next one, uh, on August 25th. Uh, it's called Brazen in Blue by Rachel Miles. It is book five in the Muses Salon s series. I was going to say theory, and I'm like, that's not right. Um, so the first one is called Jilting the Duke. So that's a romance. Let's see. And they don't look to be connected in any way. Uh, where were we? Oops. Uh, now, I'm not sure if the other ones are mysterious, but this one seems to me. Um, okay. Lady Emmeline Hartley has overcome every obstacle life has thrown her way. A spinster, disappointed in love, she's on the brink of a marriage of convenience when the man who rejected her heart reappears in need of her help. Um, it gives Emma a chance to escape, put to use one of her most unusual talents, probably solving crimes, and perhaps convince him once and for all to risk his heart. Adam Montclair, one of the most successful agents at the home office, rubs elbow with the highest levels of society. Um, no matter how much he desires M, he is completely unsuitable. On a mission to uncover a plot against the government, oh, okay, Adam knows M's uncanny ability to recall voices will be essential. Uh, it it may become impossible to deny it. So it is a, a bit of a mystery and some romance. I don't read that much romance. I've probably said this before in uh, my mystery books. This, I think um, in the last, uh, in, um, I was gonna say in the last video, but no. In the July video, I think there was a historical romance and it seemed to be more romance than mystery so that probably seems to be the same um but yeah i like the title and the cover looks gorgeous there's a dog on it good dog uh, next on august did i say brazen and blue is august 25th if i did not say and this is also august 21st 5th Ugh. someday someday and this is called Murder at King's, King's Coat? K 
King Scott. Not sure. A Gilded Newport Mystery. This is book eight in a series by Alyssa Maxwell. Just looking up the series. So, okay, this is different. Uh, Newport, Rhode Island, 1895. And Emma Cross is a second cousin to Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh, and then she, in the first one, she witnesses a murder. That's usually how it works. So in this one, it is July, 1899. Uh, the salty ocean breeze along Bellevue Avenue carries new smells of gasoline and exhaust as Emma, now editor-in-chief of the Newport Messenger, covers Newport's first ever automobile parade. But the festive atmosphere turns to shock as young Philip King drunkenly swerves his motor car into a wooden figure of a nanny pushing a pram on the obstacle course. Yikes. That evening, uh, ho at a dinner party hosted by Ella King at her gothic-inspired cottage, <laughs> it's in quotes, cottage, King's coat, Emma and her beau, Derek Andrews, are enjoying food and the company when Ella's son staggers in, obviously still inebriated. But the disruption is nothing compared to the urgent shouts of the coachman. Rushing out, they find the family's butler penned against a tree beneath the front wheels of Philip's motor car, close to death. Yikes. At least if you were drunk, like, on a horse, the horse either stopped or knew to go home. Like, ugh. At first, the tragic tableau appears to be a reckless accident, one which could ruin Philip's reputation. But when Emma later receives a message informing her that the butler bullied his staff and took advantage of young maids, what a pig, she begins to suspect the scene may have been staged and steers the police toward a murder investigation. But while Emma investigates the connection between a competing heir to the King Fortune, a mysterious child, an inmate of an insane asylum, and the brutal boxing rings of Providence, a killer remains at large with un- finished business to attend to. I can only imagine the inmate at the insane asylum. That's gonna be yikes because they were pretty bad. And if I've heard they're not that much better nowadays. But I do like that. I don't I'm thinking I think I've maybe read a couple American ones. I think the other ones have been mostly um, British or European. Okay, last one. This one does not have a cover. Um, and again, it says that the title has not yet been released, but it says August 31st. Dishonor in Camp 133, The Sergeant Newman Mysteries by Wayne Arthurson. Have I spoken about this? I don't know. Okay, this is not on Goodreads, so maybe if I just Google it. Uh, there is... The first one was called Traitors of Camp 133. Um, and this seems to be German POWs in southern Alberta southern Alberta camp after the allies invade Normandy so World War II um, and the first one Sergeant August Newman 
uh, doesn't think that somebody hung himself and so he must be German uh, because he is under the watchful eyes of his Canadian captors so that's interesting I don't know how many books there are Like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of World War II stuff. I love this. Just like. Garbage. Ugh. Sometimes, you know, they're garbage. <laughs> the websites are just like, why do you do this to me? It might be the second one. Because it doesn't. There, I don't seem to find anything else. So, uh, until I say otherwise, this is the... Until I find out otherwise, this is the second one. And, um... They, they are thousands of miles from the front lines, locked into a Canadian prisoner of war camp at the base of the Canadian Rockies. Uh... For August Newman, head of Camp Civil Security and decorated German war hero, this is reality. Chef Schlepal has been found dead in mess number three, a knife in his back. Now it's up to Newman to find out who, what would drive the men of the camp, brothers in arms, to turn on each other. He's learned, of course, that beneath the veneer of duty and honor, the camp is anything but civil. When the trail of clues ends at the edge of the prison yard, Newman must consider the crime bigger than the camp. Is someone getting out of the prison? If so, can he follow? If he can't, he might have to live with the dishonor of Camp 133. So that sounds interesting too. You don't usually see if it's a World War II novel. You don't usually see them in prison camps or from the German point of view. Um, so yeah, that sounds, I don't know if I would read it, but I'm sure somebody would love that. Um, but yeah, that's all of them. Finally, we've done it. I think this is a good idea to make it into two parts, because I think the other one was about 20-ish minutes, and this is over 20-ish. So if you made it through both videos, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.